Barbara Nicolato, Nick Snacks here. My project today will be a tunnel card, which can be pressed closed and fit into a 6-inch square envelope. It is accordion pleated sides and is made of five panels, each contributing to part of the total 3D scene I will be building. For this project, I'll be using paper from this 12 by 12 inch pad of decorative paper called Watercolors by Craft Consortium. Each side has a coordinating design and color, and there are three sheets of each design. For my tunnel card, I've chosen this paper with the blue-greens and a floral-like design on the back. I'm using all three sheets of this paper and cut out seven squares, five and a half by five and a half inch. I cut out two rectangles at five and a half by eight and a half inch. These two rectangles will be scored every half inch along the eight and a half inch side. I'm also using 80 pound white cardstock. I cut five squares at five and a half inch by five and a half inch. I will also be using a scoreboard with a bone folder a small cutting mat, a cutting knife with a new sharp blade, a ruler, a pair of scissors, a pencil, some colored pencils, some dries clear adhesive by Art Glitter, and I love that my two ounce size is fitted with this micro tip where I can get the glue precisely where I want it. And I'll also select from my jar of glitter gel pens. I'll also be using diamond stickles and VersaFine Claire inks in Pinecone, Shady Lane, Twilight, and Nocturne. I selected stamps by Lavinia from my stash. And the beauty here is you can choose which of your own stamps you want to use for the scene that you create. So I've chosen Tree Stem, Fairy Toadstool, Blackberry, Mini Blackberry, Lilium, Toad Lodge, Mini Flutter, Sky, Silhouette Grass and Silhouette Foliage, Fairy Foragers, Whimsical Hairs, and for the sentiment, I chose Every Dream Begins With a Wish. I will also use Nouveau Crystal Glaze. All my materials will be listed at the bottom of this video. To begin, I've stamped my selection onto an A4 sized sheet of white multifarious cardstock. I will use my colored pencils, glitter gel pens, and crystal glaze to my liking to color my images. And then I will fussy cut each image.
I'm going to let my stamped sheet dry and move on to the construction of the tunnel. Take the two five and a half by eight and a half inch decorative papers and score every half inch along the eight and a half inch side. Then fold and burnish along each score line using the bone folder to make accordion pleats. Do this to both papers. I will be cutting square apertures into the center of four of the five white five and a half inch squares I have. The last one will stay intact and that one I'll be putting aside. Before cutting them, I will adhere the decorative paper over top of each one, and this will save on cutting time as I will be cutting two papers at the same time. Some people may own a die cutting machine and have square dies. The Spellbinders large square dies and the small square die sets will work if you use the largest two dies from each of the two sets. The apertures will be a slightly different size than the tunnel card I'm making now, but that's okay. For those of you that may not have a die cutting machine, I'm going to do this manually. I'm going to set aside one sheet here for the back panel. The front panel of the tunnel card will have a four inch square opening centered into it. The second panel, a three and a quarter square opening. The third panel will have a three inch square opening and the fourth, a two and a half square inch opening. To achieve this, let's start with the five and a half inch front panel. I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch in on all four sides. I'm going to make small pencil marks and then I'm going to draw lines to connect these little marks all around the card. So this will be a centered four by four inch opening on the front panel. I won't cut these until after I've affixed the decorative paper onto them. The second panel will have a smaller aperture. So I will measure in seven eighths of an inch on each side and draw my lines. And if we cut along these lines, the opening will be three and a quarter by three and a quarter. For this third panel, the aperture will be even smaller. So I'm going to measure in one and a quarter inch on each side and draw my lines. So 
So this opening is three by three. The fourth panel will have a two and a half inch square aperture. So I will measure in one and a half inches on each side and draw my lines. And if we cut here, we will be cutting out a square that's two and a half inches square. And that will be the furthest one in the back. The very back of our tunnel card will be solid without an aperture. Now let's look at the five and a half inch squares of decorative paper. There should be six not seven. Each one will be glued to the white cardstock. It will be glued on the side that doesn't have the aperture markings on it. The last sheet is going to have a decorative piece glued to the front of it and one on the back of it. And there we have six sheets. Again, it's important not to cover the side of white paper with the measurements. I'm using art glitter glue to affix the two papers. It's been difficult to find this being sold online during the winter months where temperatures drop to freezing. If this glue is exposed to freezing temperatures, it will somewhat harden and will not flow well anymore. If you're in a year-round warm climate, think about where it's shipping from and make sure in the autumn you have enough to last you through the winter. Now it's time to start cutting the apertures into the panels. Let me give you a few pointers. Start with a new point, a sharp new point on the cutting knife. Use a metal ruler, not a plastic one, to avoid the blade slicing into the ruler. Don't tilt the knife to the right or to the left. Keep it straight. Press hard on the ruler, but gentle on the knife. Make a few passes with the knife if need be, rather than try to grow, go through all at once. Now it's time to fussy cut all my designs. You see that I'm cutting the paper into sections. This is going to make it easier than cutting um, a small pattern from it from a large sheet. You see me with a large scissor here, but later I'm going to switch to a smaller one for more ease in cutting. This is a good project to do while you're sitting in front of the TV or outside if the weather is nice. You don't have to be confined to indoors. When I cut the lilium, I'm cutting the stems away. I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to use the two or three flowers to make a few corners in my tunnel card.
It's pretty much impossible to think I'm going to sit there and cut every single little blade of grass on this stamp. So the trick is to cut a lot of, um, make a lot of cuts inward so that it looks like there are a lot of blades of grass and then fill it in with a green colored pencil. So it ended up taking me about 40, 45 minutes to get everything cut the way I liked it. And I thought about speeding it up but I don't want to give you motion sickness to watch all the cutting so I'm going to uh, edit the video right here and be back when everything is all cut now that I have all the cutting done it's time to start to assemble the project I'm going to start with the panel in the back that's going to be the back side this is going to be the side you'll see through the tunnel by putting the fourth panel over my back panel, it'll show me how much of a square size that's going to be showing through the tunnel card. And that's what I have to work with. I've decided that only the fairy forager is going to go onto this back panel. By placing the third panel, the th with the three by three opening over the fourth panel it's going to show me how much uh, space I have to work with what will be seen through the tunnel the cut images can be glued in front or behind the panel to give more depth to the tunnel card as you see I'm always checking the scene by laying down the panel to make sure that what I'm adding enhances the overall scene and doesn't cover other images behind it. I've decided that the outside of the accordion fold is going to have the floral design like the back of my card. So now I have to figure out which way I need to glue it down. And this is not the right way. I want the last fold of this panel that I'm holding to be facing, pointing towards the right. So I had to flip it over and the one on my right side is already in the right position. So I glue that last accordion fold and place it down so that the score line or fold itself is even 
with the end of my panel and I'm going to check it to make sure it fits properly. Now the right accordion fold panel is going to be glued in the same position with the free end pointing towards the left. Again, when I have it in place, I'm going to check to make sure that it's even with the back of the card. Now it's just a matter of evenly spacing the other four panels, making sure that the cover panel, the front one, is glued to the very front part of the accordion folds. I'm going to start at the back of the card and work my way up to the front. So I've counted up the folds where I'm going to place the next panel. And that's the panel, or excuse me, and that's the fold that's going to get the glue. Once the panel's in place, just press down to make sure that it adheres nicely. And then do the same on the opposite side. That would be the right side. It's important to count the pleats and folds accurately so you know exactly where to put the panel and so that both the left and right side of the panel are on corresponding pleats. But oops, here I had my moment. On the left, the glue should be on the fold where that arrow is pointing. So as a result, this panel that I'm now placing will have one pleat glued to its front and the corresponding pleat on the other side glued to its back. Lucky for me, it's not going to make a difference when the card is finished, but I do have to carefully count the rest of the pleats and fold to determine where to put the last uh, two panels. The front panel will be the last panel to adhere. You're going to glue the last two pleats and they will be stuck onto the back 
of the front panel, giving the card a clean, finished look. Make sure you press everything into place and that everything meets up and is squared away. And there you have your card. It can be folded flat, put into a six inch uh, square envelope, and the receiver can pull it open and display a beautiful three-dimensional scene. I hope this video has inspired you to try your own tunnel card. If so, I hope you'll post your creation on our two Facebook sites. The URLs are given at the end of this video. Most materials used here can be purchased at Del Bellows Designs, Dot com and the links are listed below the video. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Have a great crafting day.